Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercress, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play. This time around, it's Congo's Caper for Super Nintendo. Might as well go ahead and check out the options real quick. A and B let you jump, X and Y let you attack. Sounds at stereo. I think we should be good here. One player game. And this is how the game begins. Two rubies fall from the sky. You are obviously one of the two monkeys in the center that are not dark brown. You're obviously the one on the right. You are Congo. That is Conget. Not surprisingly, she is now going to get kidnapped. And she gets kidnapped by some weird demon thing. After you get stabbed, obviously. While you're looking around wondering where Conget could have been taken off to, another ruby fall from the sky, you grab it and you become a uh, super kid again. That's what the game wants to call Congo. And you jump off and the game begins. Now this first world, you'll be playing one level at a time. There are four in each level. And this is basically intro level. Might as well mention some other controls. Holding L and R will let you run. Holding up. Well, you look up and it doesn't really do much. But if you jump while holding up, you get to do this little super jump. And if you press and hold down while doing the super jump, you will dive down, being able to let you drop down from the super jump faster. Now the yellow rubies, yellow ruby, yeah, yellow diamonds, I guess you could call them that, they will allow you to gain extra lives, just collect a hundred of them. The blue sapphires, I want to think they're sapphires, I, they could be gems for all I know. You grab those, the little slot machine in the upper center of the screen goes, and it allows you to not only get the bonus stage, but also allows you to gain extra lives as well. You can get those little yellow diamonds from the enemies, but you can also get the blue ones as well as the little rubies that you saw earlier in the intro. Yes, yeah, so it shows up as items as well. I might as well go, go down here first, because... Two one-ups. Big ones are worth one life. And you're going to need a lot of them if you want to get through this game. Definitely do not want to fall into the lava here. That is instant death. Remember, if you want to jump higher and longer, you will have to use the super jump. The run command will allow you to jump further, but it won't allow you to jump higher. So you're going to have to use both to get the best jump possible. Now these little rubies here, they work a little interestingly. If you're hit in your normal form like this, you lose all your rupees. And you will go back to being a monkey. If you get hit while you're a monkey, you're going to die and lose a life. And if I could get three rupees, I will be able to show you what that does. And I just narrowly missed being attacked by that dinosaur. Thankfully, I super jumped out of the way just in time. And whenever you touch that sign that says next, it takes you to the next level. Now it's time for the second part of this, which takes place in a forest. Not going to be that much harder. And these guys are now... Moving around in weird ways. Alright, I got my third rupee. That changes us into Super Congo, where we kind of turn Super Saiyan. In a way. It is there that the rupees that you pick up now act as hit points. And if you pick up a rupee while you're Super Congo, you get a 1-up. But you must have three rupees, meaning you must be hitless and your health meter full in order for that to happen. Thankfully, the better you play, the more of these you're going to get.
And I nearly got something on that slot machine, but that didn't really turn out well for us, did it? Of course not. It should be noted about the cavemen that they will jump when you do, to an extent. It is a delayed reaction, but they will do it nonetheless. And the only way to break these blocks that are right below us is to hit a caveman and send him flying through the blocks, which I am not having a very good time doing. Maybe this one. No, not even that one? Okay. Oh, those guys will attack you. Gotta remember that they will do that. There we go. Need to be a little bit further away. And if you press down on a slope, you will start rolling. And as long as you hold down, you will continue rolling. If you let go, you will stop rolling. You cannot switch direction while you're rolling, so keep that in mind. Now it's time for stage three, which is going to be some rather interesting platforming. Just jump into these, bo these branches to grab them. And whenever you jump off a branch, you will always super jump. I'm not even holding up here, and I'm doing that. Also, you want to make sure the slot machine goes to a complete stop before you grab another blue gem. That way, you can actually get whatever bonus you're trying to get. Keyword, trying. I should mention that by holding up, you can also press Y and attack upwards, and you can attack while ducking as well. want to move the little right a little here. Avoid those, those uh, little vine creatures' faces. So you don't take unnecessary damage and leap into the little vines that make up their bodies so you can grab some grab a hold of something and continue on your little merry way want to be careful here because you never know when a pterodactyl will come out of the trees got hit by one while at the height of my super jump during the practice run and that's not very fun It was right here, right around here, I think. Yeah, it was right around here. And you definitely don't want to go down there either, because, well, it's not instant death, you will take damage there, and I, that happens to me again. Thankfully, I'm at Super Congo form now, so it's not really much of an issue. Okay. Went away for this guy to get to the right here, so that way I can go ahead and continue. There's nothing below the platform here, so don't waste your time. Also, if you attack while holding on to a branch or a rope like that, you will automatically let go, so keep that in mind too. And we are now headed to the fourth and last part of the first stage. Where we start by going into a cave automatically, kind of like World 1-2 in Super Mario Brothers. You can skip this if you want, but I don't feel like it. It's not really that, that long, to be honest. And when you drop down here, you will be chased after by a giant dinosaur. You will want to run away from this thing, or else it will be instant death for you. Want to be careful with your jump, so that way you don't land somewhere you don't want to be. Hit these guys while ducking whenever you can. And you want to run all the way over here. And just wait for this guy to show up. And there's that evil demon who has now decided to take control of a dinosaur. And I'd rather have one of those guys at on the screen at any given time. And this is why I like this screen, because when you least suspect it, you may actually get a ruby, especially while you're in Super Congo form. 
Give yourself one-ups. Every little bit helps. Now you're probably wondering what it is I'm doing. I have to whack this guy with the club, then walk into him, and while I'm pushing him, press Y to send him towards the dinosaur. This not only attacks normal enemies, but it will also allow me to attack this dinosaur. And whittle down the boss health meter, which is at the bottom. You can get at least two or three hits at any given time, depending on whether or not the dinosaur is either far away from the platform or close to it. I think you can get three if you hit the enemy into it with a second club whack. And that was a pretty easy boss, but we're not done yet because this little demon guy goes inside the dinosaur's mouth and we're going to have to fight him inside its innards. So we're not done with the first stage quite yet. Also, my, my score is going to be kind of low through this game. It tends to be if you are quite good at this game, and you're fast, and what have you. And I managed to have no eff effort at all in grabbing that one. Now you go very slow in water. You can speed up with the shoulder buttons. Want to be careful though, the spikes aren't instant death, but they do hurt you, nonetheless. Thankfully this part is rather easy. And I've already got 11 lives. Now, you could just go to the center, but you have to get close to him in order to trigger the flag that starts the boss battle. Kind of weird how that works. Now you can go all the way to the upper left corner, or upper right if you prefer, and just keep smacking the Y button over and over and over. You will take damage, but he will fall before you do. And whenever you beat a boss, you will always get two yellow rubies, two very big yellow rubies, giving you two extra lives. Those lives will be very useful, as you will soon see in later videos for this Let's Play. And we just rescued Kongat. That's great. But this is only the first stage, so it's only a matter of time before she gets kidnapped again. And what do you know, she gets kidnapped again. But only after the devil thing, whatever his name is, decides to have more fun by poking people, then we meet these four guys. These four guys are the next four bosses that we're going to meet. And from this point on, we can select a stage. We can play any of these four stages in any order that we want. But that will have to wait until the next video. So join me next time where I decide to pick my poison and just go with it. On our second quest to rescue Kongat, hopefully this time for good. Until then, this is Prince Watercrest. Take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching!